Hey all Kono's Crash Course here. This lecture is over Darwin, Marx, and Freud. Just a reminder though, the quiz this week will be over this lecture and the assigned history reading, so make sure you know both. We'll start with Charles Darwin, who lived from 1808 to 1882. He's most famous for writing The Origin of Species in 1859 and The Descent of Man in 1871, which provide the foundation for the theory of evolution. Evolution theories existed before Darwin wrote these books, but none of them had enough evidence to successfully back their claims up. In Darwin's first book, Origin of Species, he never mentions the true origin of all of the species, but rather how the species change over time. The book had no footnotes, which is really odd for a scientific book. He also introduced a concept called natural selection, which was scientific reasoning for change, which required no god. Dr. T never gave an official definition for it, so here's what I got from Wikipedia. Natural selection is the differential survival and reproduction of individuals due to different in phenotype. It is the key mechanism of evolution, the change in heritable traits characteristic of a population over generations. Later, Darwin published The Descent of Man, which took the concept of natural selection and expanded it to humans. He theorized that populations of animals slowly morphed into humans over thousands of years through slight changes in each generation. When it was first released, the book had a negative reaction from the scientific community. However, after it had more time to be examined and distributed, it gained popularity and considered fact by many scientists today. While many Christians are against it because it takes God out of the equation, some believe that God guided the evolution process. Next, we'll talk about Karl Marx, a Jewish atheist who lived from 1818 to 1883. He read Darwin's books and believed they were successful in proving that God wasn't real. He moved to Paris and met Friedrich Engels, I probably said that wrong, who lived from 1820 to 1895 and became one of Marx's only true friends. They were both revolutionary thinkers and wanted to establish a new form of government. Together they wrote the Communist Manifesto in 1848 which established the basic concepts of communism. Later in 1867 Marx wrote Das Kapital which was his criticism of capitalism. He wanted to dedicate the book to Darwin but Darwin refused to let him do this. Marx believed that there were two classes, the capitalists and the laborers. The two classes were dependent on each other. The capitalists paid the laborers in exchange for them to do work for them. But he accused the capitalists of not treating the laborers fairly and that the laborers should rise up against them. He believed that everyone should become one class where everyone is in harmony and treated fairly, otherwise known as communism. The transition phase from a capitalist government to a communist government is known as a socialist government. Marx also used the concept of dialectical materialism, which stated that matter is dynamic and can change over time. It's basically taking evolution and applying it to objects. Marx never saw a communist government in his lifetime, but Lenin would eventually apply it to Russia in 1917. Finally, we have Sigmund Freud, an Austrian atheist who lived from 1856 to 1939. He wondered if humans were truly rational beings or if there was a deep part of the soul that influenced the decisions they made. He settled on the latter and developed the concept of the subconscious. This concept gave humans less responsibility over their actions since now they could claim there was some sort of mysterious force controlling them. He also created the practice of psychoanalysis which according to Google is a system of psychological theory and therapy which aims to treat mental disorders by investigating the interaction of conscious and unconscious elements in the mind and bringing repressed fears and conflicts into the conscious mind by techniques such as dream interpretation and free association. Also, apparently a lot of Freud's conclusions were sexual. Dr. T really emphasized that. Alright, that's everything for this lecture. If you have any questions or things I missed, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and here's a clip that's kinda sorta related, but not really. Children, where's the big contraption? I don't know. It was here just a moment ago. It disappeared? Stacy, do you realize what this means? We're done. No! Some kind of mysterious force always takes away Phineas and Ferb's inventions before Mom shows up. This time, it took away their invention before I showed up. The mysterious force recognizes that I'm now a grown-up. A mysterious force? I'm not buying it. I am a woman of science. At least that's what my horoscope says.